Hello everyone! Today we're going to take a quick look at Avatar The Way of Water, directed and co-written by James Cameron and starring Sam Worthington, Zoe Zaldana, and Sigourney Weaver. Having been reborn as a Navi at the end of the last movie, Jake has settled down with his wife Neytiri and started a family. They live a relatively peaceful existence with the rest of the forest tribe and a handful of humans who remain friendly with the Navi. One of those humans is a boy who goes by the name Spider, who is the son of Colonel Quaritch, who was only a baby at the time of his father's demise. And for many years, all was well. But then one day, the white people, I mean the sky people, returned. And Quaritch, played once again by Stephen Lang, has returned with them... Kind of. His mind was cloned and transferred into a Navi body, similar to how the avatars worked in the first movie. Not wanting to make his people a target, Jake takes his family out of the forest to a faraway water tribe of Navi. They look similar to their forest brethren, but their bodies have evolved in a way that more suits their amphibious lifestyle. And this is where Jake chooses to hide from Quaritch and learn the way of water. It has been a while since I saw the first movie. I... I don't know if I watched it more than once, come to think of it. I remember thinking it was visually amazing, especially in 3D, and narratively mid. There was nothing special about that story at all, but in the end, I wasn't bored. Thirteen years later, we finally have the sequel that Cameron talked about making a long-ass time ago. Better late than never, I guess. I would say this movie is better than the original overall, and at least approaches good. Part of that may be that Cameron did not write this one on his own. He had some help this time around from Rick Jaffa and Amanda Silver, who wrote the recent Planet of the Apes trilogy. And unlike the first movie, this feels like a lot more than just Dances with Wolves in Space. I do like what they did with Jake's family and his many struggles at raising his children, and Spider to a lesser extent. And he and his family struggle to adapt to the lifestyle of the water people I thought was handled pretty well. And part of that story involves one of Jake's sons befriending a highly intelligent whale-like creature and forming a bond with it, which was handled pretty well overall, even if it may have dragged a bit. I was a little worried that they had basically resurrected Quaritch, at least in mind if not body, and does that mean as long as they have a copy of his mind on file, he's basically immortal? But it worked a lot better than I thought it would, especially the stuff between him and Spider. And it is kind of interesting that he basically gets to try to avenge his own death. I mean, how many people get that opportunity? The first Avatar movie had amazing visual effects, of course, that is what it's known for, and I think Cameron actually one-upped himself here. I have not seen a movie in 3D for quite some time. I don't even remember what the last movie I saw in 3D was, but because it's Avatar, it seemed appropriate. I mean, this did kick off the 3D craze. The modern 3D craze, I should say. But something caught me by surprise. I'm not sure how I did not hear about this ahead of time, but not only is it in 3D, it's also in HFR. And that was a little weird at first, especially since there is so much computer-generated stuff on the screen. Initially, it looked not so much like a movie, but more like a video game cutscene. But as the movie went on, I did start to get used to it, and overall, it actually did work for me, especially the scenes where Jake's kids are exploring the area underwater right by the village. I mean, it looked absolutely breathtaking. It's like I'm staring into an exhibit at the Monterey Bay Aquarium, except with alien fish. But this is where Cameron, at least in my opinion, screwed up. I noticed there were several moments where the scenes were kind of shifting frame rates, and at first I thought, is there a problem with the projector? But after I got out of the movie, I went online, and it turns out, no, that was deliberate. Cameron chose not to make the entire movie in 48 frames a second. I do not get that at all. Especially during the big battle sequence at the end, there are some moments where it keeps going back and forth between 24 and 48, and I found that jarring as hell. I honestly cannot fathom why Cameron chose to go this route, and I can't believe I actually have to say this, but if you're going to do high frame rate, you gotta do it all the way through, or not at all. And for that reason, I don't think I can recommend seeing the HFR version of this movie. I think you're better off watching it in the standard 24 frames a second. There are some cool shots you're going to miss out on, but at least it'll be consistent throughout. I will give James Cameron credit. He has shown us how to do HFR and do it well, and is probably the first filmmaker to do so. 
but he also gave us a very good example of how not to do it. And speaking of that huge battle sequence at the end, overall, very well done. There were some brutal moments in that fight, especially involving the giant space whale I talked about earlier. And one moment that really stands out to me is when Neytiri uses her bow to grab some guy by the neck and throw him into another guy. I'm like, oh my god, she just beat a motherfucker with a motherfucker. This is awesome. Unfortunately, this battle sequence stumbles a bit near the end. It's a little too long and starts to get kind of repetitive. There are two separate moments in the final battle where Jake's kids get taken hostage. There's even a moment where one of the kids says, I can't believe I'm getting tied up again. You and me both, kid. It honestly got to the point where I was starting to look at my watch, which I had not done for the entire movie up to that point. It's like, come on, Jimmy, wrap it up. I also would like to talk a bit about Kiri, who is Jake and Neytiri's daughter, voiced by Sigourney Weaver, who ended up being an incredibly frustrating character. She is not Jake and Neytiri's biological daughter. She was actually somehow born from the avatar of Sigourney Weaver's character in the first movie. And no one has any idea how this happened or who the father is. I guess they're saving that reveal for the next movie, 13 years down the road. Hopefully not that long. But overall, Kiri's story feels largely unfinished, and not just because of the mystery surrounding how she came to be. Most of Jake's family has a lot of trouble adapting to life on the water, as one might expect. Kiri does not. And they seem to make a really big deal about the fact that she has no trouble at all adapting to this aquatic lifestyle. Where do they go with this? Nowhere. So, what was the point then? There's also a scene where they visit this magical underwater spirit tree or some bullshit like that, and they use their little alien USB cables to hook up to it, and it lets them link to the spirit world or something. And when Kiri does this, she actually has a seizure, and they make a really big deal about how she can definitely not do that again, because if she does, it will almost certainly kill her. This is never addressed again. You would think this would lead to a moment where she has to go down to the tree and risk her life, or... Maybe doesn't have to, but just does it anyway and disobeys the doctor's orders. No, they never do that. So again, what was the point? If you have a movie that runs over three hours and you got this many loose ends, you're doing something wrong. In the end, I do think it is an improvement over the original, and it at least approaches being a good movie, but there are a few missteps that keep it from getting there. I don't think it's worth paying full price, but I could recommend it as a matinee. And go ahead and see it in high frame rate if you're curious, but honestly, like I said before, I think you're better off sticking with the standard 24 frames a second. And that's all I have to say about Avatar The Way of Water. Till next time, take care.